my question is, how would you justify the oral Torah to Christians? Because they have the idea that um, the New Testament is just like the specific gateway to God and anything that comes besides that um, is not something that you can justify. So how would you go about explaining that? So as it turns out, this is very strange that a Christian would complain about the oral Torah because if you would have asked any first century Christian, is there an oral Torah? They would say yes. And if you said there wasn't, they would look at you like you're crazy. They would look at you like you're a Sadducee because the Sadducees didn't believe in the oral Torah. And it's very clear in the Christian Bible that the standard, the gold standard was the Pharisees in the Christian Bible, which means the Christian rejection of Teresh Peh, the oral Torah, is not in the Christian Bible, just the opposite. It is the Pharisees and scribes that sit in the seat of Moses, Matthew 23. Matthew 23. I didn't quote the Apostolic Fathers. I didn't quote Clement of Rome. I didn't quote the Didache. I didn't quote the Proto-Gospel of James. I didn't quote Augustine. I'm quoting the Gospels itself. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, this is the Sermon of the Mount. You can't enter heaven. Now, the Pharisees, the Purushim, believed in the written and oral Torah. And that was the standard. It doesn't say in the Sermon of the Mount that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Sadducees, because that would be ridiculous. They would left you out the window. It's in the text. See Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. These oracles were given to the Pharisees. And Paul, when he wanted to brag of his credentials, he didn't say that he didn't believe in the oral Torah like the Sadducees. He bragged that he was a Pharisee, and not just any Pharisee, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, and he was more zealous than anyone else. Well, why didn't he simply say somewhere that there's no oral Torah and the Pharisees made it up? No, just the opposite. Gamliel, who was a chief rabbi of the Pharisees, is spoken of in the highest regards. This is a later Christian invention to reject the oral Torah. They would have thought you're nuts in the first century if you would have said there's no oral Torah. It's all silly, completely silly. Later on, I have a whole chapter in my in volume one on this, on the oral Torah and how you have the oral Torah discussed constantly in the Gospels. The prohibition of causing a bloodletting wound on the Sabbath, but an exception is made for a circumcision in John chapter 7. Where does that come from? The oral Torah is a a detailed explanation of how to perform the commandments in the Torah, which means that there are no new commandments in the oral Torah. People misunderstand this. People think there are 613 commandments and maybe 400 are in the written and another 213 in the oral Torah. Not at all. When Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 21 instructs us to slaughter an animal in the manner that I have shown you. You can look all over the Torah. There's nowhere it tells you how to slaughter an animal properly. That's the oral Torah. The oral Torah gives us the details of how we are to perform this. We're to afflict our souls on Yom Kippur, on the Sabbath of Sabbaths. That's repeated in the Torah. You should afflict your soul. And anyone who does not afflict his soul, he'll be cut off from the Jewish people. Where does it say what you're supposed to do? Well, how do you afflict your soul? What does that mean? Does it mean you're supposed to whip yourself? What, what does that mean, even? There must be some standard because there's a very serious punishment for violating it. And as it turns out, we see in Isaiah chapter 58, it means fasting and so on. The oral Torah tells us how to perform these acts. You're not allowed to work on the Sabbath. What does that mean, work on the Sabbath? Can I move a chair that's in my bedroom into my living room on the Sabbath? Is that forbidden? Can I move my chair from my home across the street to somebody else's home? Let's say it would be more difficult to move the chair from my living room 
all the way upstairs to the top room in my house, three floors up. I have a big house. Or I can I take my chair from my living room, just right out the door, to a person's living room across the street? I don't know if you can go up or down, nothing. Which of those is a permitted act and which is a forbidden act? How do you know it? We see in Jeremiah 17, they knew exactly what it means because that's the oral Torah. What is a Sabbath day journey in the book of Acts? Without an oral Torah, you wouldn't know any of this. How do you even have a Jewish calendar? And you go, well, why, why, why can't you have a Jewish calendar? Because the Jewish calendar is complex. It's not a lunar calendar, although it's based on the cycle of the moon. But because the lunar year is 354 days and a solar year is 365 and a quarter days, you're losing 11 and a quarter days with each subsequent year. How would you keep Passover in the springtime? Why do I have to keep Passover in the springtime? Because it says so in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Well, how do you do that if there are 12 months and you're losing 11 days each year? If you're in Amsterdam and Passover is April 20th this year, then the next year it's going to be April 9th. Do I need to explain any more? How many years will it take before Passover finds itself in the middle of the winter in January. Just a handful of years. Torah says you can't do, but doesn't explain exactly what to do. How do you solve this problem? That's only the oral Torah. And it was that the church would consult with the Jews when Passover occurred so they would know when to celebrate Easter. And this was an enormous controversy in the early church. Enormous the issue of when to celebrate Passover, because John doesn't even agree with the Synoptic Gospels on the date of when Jesus was crucified. Which, but whichever way they went, they had to consult with the Jewish people. They had to. Because we have a complex lunar solar calendar where certain months are intercalated, there's the fancy word, in order to have them work. And that's based on an oral Torah of the exact length of a lunar month which is 29.53059. You can't know that without the Oral Torah. You can't know that without the Oral Torah. And then to amp up the chutzpah, the goal, the audacity of Christians to claim that we don't have any laws outside of the Bible alone, but somehow Paul can get away with this. When it says in Deuteronomy, Le'isach you shouldn't muzzle an ox when it's treading. So Paul, you, know, you can't, an animal is treading the very food that it eats. It's an, it's an act of, of not being merciful to an animal. It's a treacherous act to muzzle an animal when it's, when it's working in the field, the very food that it eats, that it consumes. The Torah has his leisachsim shayabadisho, full word in Hebrew. Oh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says, Do you think God really is concerned about oxen? Please look it up for yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. He's talking about supporting missionaries in the church. Now, do you know what arrogance that is to completely add a law that's not in the Torah and change what's there? The Torah says, like Sachem Shabbatishai. That is a violation completely of what the text says. There's a prohibition of you can't take away from the law. You can't add to it. Read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. What a game they play. So Christians are really ignorant of all this. They don't know it. But their Christian Bible is adding in all kinds of thing, ideas that are completely obscene. You, the Eucharist? To eat the body and drink the blood of the Messiah? In 1 Corinthians 11, in John chapter 6, in Luke 22, it's all over the place. Where is that in the written Torah? So this is a game where there's no equal weights and measurements, where Paul can do what he wants. He can wreak havoc on the text. He can rip, rip out passages from Deuteronomy chapter 30 when he misquotes it in, in Romans chapter 10. It's fine. You could misquote Hosea chapter 2 
when you misquote it in Romans chapter 9. Go ahead, be my... You can misquote Isaiah 59. This is a game. So why don't Christians who complain about the oral Torah apply the same standard to Paul? They won't. He gets a free pass. That's not an oral Torah to eat the body and drink the blood of the Messiah. That's not in the Torah. That's not in the five books of Moses. I dare anyone to show me that anywhere in Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures. And if it's not in the Jewish scriptures, how does Paul add that? Why do you believe him when he says that Jesus told him that? He should immediately be exposed as a liar. Where is that? Show me one place where you have the Eucharist in Tanakh. If you show me a place where you have to eat the body and drink the blood of the Messiah, just show me one place in Tanakh, I'll be in a church in one second. And I can walk to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in 15 minutes from me. 15 minutes I could be in that church. Show it to me. It isn't there. Now, what happened is the church realized the trouble it was getting itself into. Because if they were relying on the Jews to determine when the Easter should be held, that means that the Jews, who they detest and despise, would determine when they should celebrate their most holy day. And speaking of Easter, how do you dare add a holiday that isn't in the Bible? It isn't there, and it's not even in the Christian Bible. And Christmas, a pagan holiday from top to bottom. But this is, so these oral laws are just fine because they're Christian. They're Christy. You see, you understand why Jews listen to this drivel and were shocked and appalled? The church declared, and this was a letter Constantine, Yemach Shemai V'Zechrei, sent out after the Council of Nicaea, because it was at that Council in 325 that the date when Easter was to be celebrated was established. And the controversy that I de described to you, that Christians were going, do we celebrate the 14th of Nisan, the 15th? Is it on the Sunday of that week? And, but it means you have to consult the Jews. And in Rome... The leaders of the church were appalled that we should go to the cursed Jews to determine when our holiest day is? Do you understand what was happening? So that's when the church came to reject the oral Torah because they rejected the, oral, the Jewish calendar, which is all oral Torah. And that's where it comes from. But Christians sit in their churches and, they, and the priests and ministers and pastors fill their minds with nonsense. And then they regurgitate that and don't question it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah to the Jewish people and explained to us how to perform the mitzvahs. What are phylacteries? What should they look like? And it's mentioned in the Christian Bible. What did tzitzes look like? Do they have strings? How many? How many knots? How would you know that? It's all from the Old Torah. But the nations are starting to learn. They're starting to discover and they are starting to repent. And please, God, we should see the full repentance of the nations. And they will worship the one true God. And we'll see the coming of a true Mashiach quickly in our time. Thank you for that question. אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כבלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נוער